everybody. Hello. Happy Sunday. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yep. Yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. I look forward to this um, to this particular discussion because um, it's one that's very close to my heart. Um, so I'm really, really glad that you can join me. Uh, I saw the enthusiasm around this particular topic. Um, I think it's it's um it's one that's worth having uh it's one that's worth investing our time in it's one that's worth truly actually unpacking it and 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 seeing how we can move forward um as we all absolutely have some of these challenges um around what is expected of us as as mothers as as women as girls as leaders um you know and and i really think that it's it's um it's, it's a topic I, I actually am very passionate about. So I'm literally just going to get on with it. And hi, thank you very much for joining through, um, joining in the session. So, you know, I a little bit of a bit of background um, about myself and my studies at university. I studied um, social sciences and social sciences, essentially the scientific study of human society. Um, and and it's 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 the study of of human society and social relationships within society. So I took a really keen interest um, in, in 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 society back when you know uh, I was still studying out studying out at varsity. Um, in fact, I even went through a whole career guidance process, and I write about this in in in, in my book. Um, and and I specifically majored in sociology as well as uh, social anthropology, but I had a minor in, in psychology. Um, but I really wanted to know how society is constructed. I wanted to know how does society develop? Um, what, what are the functions within, how does it function? And, and you know, how does it also change over time? You know, so I was very curious about the world we lived in um, and, and how, how society was constructed and just woven together. Um, I, I wanted to know how cultures within the society are, are also constructed. I, I, I wanted to know how are social groups and institutions uh, created? How do they come to be? So I guess for me, the question was, how has my world come to be? That's really what I wanted to know. Um, and I wanted, you know, know the, the elements of social anthropology are really around investigating I was very curious about society. I think I was trying to, um, oh, is there no sound? I wonder why. Okay. Do you mind just, uh, I'm just going to drop and then you start again. Okay. Uh, oh, is it fine now? Okay. All right. Am I good now? Okay, thank you. So let me just quickly um, uh, uh, just start again. Sorry about that, um, uh, guys. So, so I wanted to say that I, I, I wanted to understand how cultures formed, how uh, society evolved, how social groups and institutions were, were in fact uh, constructed. So I really just wanted to, to, to understand a whole lot more about my world um, and how it came to be. I guess I was trying to, to answer quite a lot of my own questions uh, based on where I had come from. But, but, you know, part of that, and hence I minored in psychology as well, I, I, I wanted to understand the role of the human mind. So the role that the human mind it plays in, in the construct. So I wanted to understand broadly how human society is formed, how the cultures within that society are formed, and what the role of the mind is in those constructs. And, and that's really what I studied at university. Um, I'm a social sciences major, and and I guess in some shape or form I trained you know to 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 be curious about the world and to to actually understand what the rules are 
you know because if you understand the rules and how they are formed chances are you you have a high higher chance of 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 redefining the rules you know and 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 that's really what i want to unpack a bit today um and and one of the things i i, I got to learn is you know is, is how human behavior influences some of these constructs um, and, and, and how our behaviors are influenced by these constructs. And, and one of the systems that, you know, it, it, anyone who studied social sciences or, or, or even uh, sociology particularly, you know, learn about social systems and patriarchy and matriarchy and matriarchy or pa patriarchal systems and matriarchal systems are social systems. So we're not born with this idea that men are more superior than women and that women must subordinate themselves to men. No, that's a social construct. It's a social system. It was created. So, so I, 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 I like to, to, to talk about, you know, the, the fact that there's, there's a, I mean, it's factual, significantly societies around the world are patriarchal societies. They are patriarchal systems. Um, and there's very few systems where the women are the dominating factors or, or, or I, I hold the power. And there's literally, um, if, if I mention some of them, is um, the, the Menangkabau uh, 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 tribes, an indigenous tribe of uh, the Sumatra region in Indonesia. I think there are about 4.2 million people there and they have um, a, a, a matriarchal system. But also how that evolved, you know, is, 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 is and, and I will do no justice to, 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 to their history, but it was as a result of younger men leaving the region to go find education elsewhere and, and more opportunities elsewhere. So matriarchs were then left behind and they, the system kind of evolved from there where they were the ones running um, and, and running predominant, predominantly the, that region. So there's also um, a, a, a tribe called Bribri in, in uh, 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 Costa Rica. There's, um, there's, there's uh, you know, Miso, I think, people in the Chinese, in, in China. Uh, but it's small, small, a very small number uh, of people. I think the largest matriarchal uh, uh, society known at, at this point is, is the one from the Sumatra region. Now, a patriarchal society is a, a system that contributes to, to, to the to the social, cultural, and, and economic uh, a, a narrative that says the man is superior over a woman. So it is a system that is really designed to prop up superiority of, of, of men. Um, I won't even dare bring in religion into this conversation because that's going to be another, like, we're going to need a whole day uh, talking about that. So. I'm going to try and stay away from the religious construct um, and just stick to, you know, the social aspect of it and, and, and you know, what I personally studied um, and, and what I've observed over time. So I always say I'm, I'm very curious about, about life. I'm very curious about people. I seek out diversity. That's because, you know, um, I don't believe that these systems that were created are systems that cannot be changed. I believe there are systems that can absolutely be changed. And it just takes understanding what that system is, what your role is in the system, and how you can, in fact, uh, uh, change it. One of the things I learned in, in, in social anthropology and, and actually a bit of cultural anthropology as well is that cultures evolve, societies evolve. We know this. Culture, because something was done in a certain way back then, does not necessarily mean it's still relevant for today. So all of these 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 norms that we've come accustomed to, that we we are so uh, uh, fitting in or forced to, even when you're fighting against your very nature, you you you're forced to fit into a certain expectation, a certain norm, and that comes with certain pressures, added pressures. You need to understand that these are not we were not born this way. These are just systems that were constructed to ensure that patriarchy persists and that, in fact, uh, women subordinate to men. Now, um, it's it's a I I remember very well one of the one of my aunts, my very kind aunt, um, the year I got married, said to me it was early in the year. She said to me, you know, um, 
we've actually <laughs> written you off. Uh, you are, I was 28 when she said this to me. She said, you're 28. You have no intention of getting married or children. We've written you off. Actually, I told her I had no intention of it. She had, she said to me, you know, it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, <laughs> so, you know, these are the things that we grow up with. These are the, 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 the norms that, and the expectations and the boxes that we get shoved into that because you're a woman, your job is to bear children, is to find a husband and bear children. And because you're a, you're a man, your job is to go hunt and bring, you know, food to the table so that the woman cooks it. Now, the truth of the matter is that, you know, um, patriarchy is, 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 has been all about male domination. It, it, it's, it's been institution, in, institutionalized in, in everything we do. Um, it's been built into all of the major social systems. So major social systems like family, religion, uh, economy, government, media, you name it. It's all wired to, to prop up the superiority of the male species. And, and the tr truth is that still in 2020, you have people like me who are the first of something first of something i mean first of something as a woman let alone a black woman doing something and 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 it, it just continues to show that the, the system gets perpetuated and it was designed in such a manner that it, it is perpetuated and carried through generations and generations but what happens when the system is no longer serving you well what happens when the cultures have evolved? What happens when the psyche of the human being has evolved? What happens when the economic situations have evolved? Where you bring the bacon, I bring just as much bacon. Where there are women who are, who are um, a, a breadwinners. What happens where the, the nuclear family uh, where, you know, it's typically a mom and a dad and children. What happens when it, that doesn't exist anymore? What happens with, um, uh, you know, absent fathers where the mothers are then required to play both roles or to play the role of a mother in raising these children all by themselves? So what happens in scenarios where it is single mothers? How do we start to revisit this notion of patriarchy under conditions where things have changed and that things have evolved? So in essence, patriarchy is a socially constructed system of inequality. Pretty much like racism, patriarchy is designed to discriminate against women, against young women, young girls and women. In fact, even against so-called younger men or weaker men where the power lies with the father figure. And, you know, the, the question is, you know, how has it continued so rampantly? So these norms that we talk about, where we are, where we are told you must laugh in a certain manner because you're a girl. Um, no, no, a girl doesn't speak like that. Or things like, you know, boys don't cry. You know, those are all the things that perpetuate these norms that we're living with. And, 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 you know, the family itself is that institution that perpetuates patriarchy. It is, in fact, the major social system that ensures that patriarchy ex it persists. Now, things have changed. So why are we not evolving with that? Now, again, this is probably a very generic statement because we continuously, uh, we are continuously living in, in a world where male domination and that toxic masculinity is the order of the day i mean things like gender-based violence are not just here and, and just a joke you know we've we've all been exposed to them we've all been affected in some shape or form we all know someone who's going through something like that at any given time and and it's it's a it, it's a real issue and it's at the core of 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 patriarchy it's at the core of 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 these norms you know that because you're a woman because you're a girl child you are subordinate you 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 are you are you are not worthy you are devalued um and you are objectified now that is the problem with these norms that we continue to per perpetuate even in our homes so you know women and girl children are oppressed 
uh, in the patriarchal system. They are discriminated against and they're subordinated. They are objectified, as I said. And, and you know, um, Levi Strauss uh, in 1967 observed and chronicled the cultural roots of, of patriarchy and highlighted a key implicit component, that of objectification and devaluation of women. And that is the real problem here. If you say no to a guy, he thinks he has the right to put lay his hand on you because you are a woman and he's a man. And you know, if if you if you coming across as you are a little more stronger and you are opinionated, some guys really just want to make sure that they oppress you because you do not deserve a voice. And that is what the system has done. We are all part of the system, though. You know, this is not a system that was just created by itself and is perpetuated on all, all, all by itself. You know, so, you know, it, it's, um, it's also way, you know, this, 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 this uh, 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 treasuring of the boy child. And I mean, I write about this in my book very well. Some of us have been on the receiving end of that significantly, where the lineage is, is driven down the, the, the boy line. Whereas in a matriarchal society, the lineage is driven down the, 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 the woman line. In fact, in Sumatra, some of these uh, uh, family names are, are, derived, are taken from the woman's side. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate because in our homes, these are perpetuated where we do not value girl children as much as we value the boy children because we think they're going to carry our names. We think they're going to be, um, a, a, you know, a, a carrying our legacy. So these are things that happen in our homes as, a, a, and hence the, the social system of family is one that really has to be re revisited and re-looked at. And you know, I always say, this is where everything is bred. Uh, this is where we are raising these human beings that we're seeing out there that we are either proud of or we are denouncing. Um, and, and we must start at home. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, you cannot ignore the fact that the system has these sets of mechanisms and these rules around, you know, a girl mustn't cut their hair, uh, a girl must wear flowery dresses. Uh, if a boy does things that seem, are seemingly a, a, a girly, oh, that's for CCs. You know, all of these things come out of our mouths in our homes. But we go and run outside and we chant feminist uh, uh, slogans and want to, 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 to denounce patriarchy. But we are the same people that are per perpetuating it at home. We are telling our girl, ch girl children when they try to even open their mouths, we tell them that they are not worthy. We tell them that uh, actually you're, you don't have a voice, don't speak, why are you even thinking about that? And then we go and take a big piece of steak and give it to the boy and say, oh, we want you to grow so big and tall and strong because you know, you're going to carry uh, 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 the family name. You know, we must really think about that. And 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 I'm I'm not one for for holding double standards. So, but I think some people, in as much as they chant these feminist, uh, 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 beautiful, in fact, feminist slogans and all the right things, your kids do not really learn from what you say. They learn from what you do. So you can say whatever you want. If back at the ranch, you do the complete opposite, you must understand that your children are watching that and that's what they're learning. And if you are treating your girl children differently to how you treat your very own uh, a boy child, then you are perpetuating the problem. You're correct. It's in the color schemes of babies. It's, uh, it, it's in everything. It's woven into the system. It's the mechanics I was talking about. It's the rules. It's the, it's the practices. It's the beliefs. It's the myths. Um, and, 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 and it, it's all these activities, you know, where you, 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 society is organized in a way that con con continuously perpetuates uh, and props up patriarchy. The problem with patriarchy is that it's got serious and dire consequences because of that toxicity and that masculinity that it, it purports, um, where men think they've got a right over a woman's body or that they have rights over the woman, their ability to earn, their ability to earn to, to, to bear children. They, they have no decisions around when they bear the children. Uh, no decision, no, no. In fact, they, 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 they are at the mercy of the men. Now, 
we have seen significant shifts in, 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 in recent years. Unfortunately, we're not, no one is going to dismantle patriarchy if we, if we don't become conscious of how we are raising our children. And our children watch us and what we do, and that is what they will become. And, you know, I, I, I actually do liken, I, 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 I liken a, a patriarchy to racism, you know. It is, it is there, it is a privilege uh, to be a man. No, it's not because men were born privileged. It's because the system continuously props them up as these kings of, of, of inequality, in fact. Um, so, so I get that people must sometimes, you know, uh, 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 show or do things to be seen as though they, they, they are fighting the system. But if you're doing the complete opposite in your home, you're not helping. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I just, I just find it incredibly frustrating when I am boxed. I find it incredibly frustrating when I'm told that because I'm a woman, I'm supposed to behave in a certain way. I find it infuriating, in fact. So I am incredibly sensitive around those things. In my home, I am incredibly sensitive about how my husband speaks to my children, what he says to my children. I'm incredibly sensitive about how I speak to my children and what I say to them because we are all products of this patriarchal system. We are all products of it. But I'm saying something has already shifted. Something has changed. Roles have changed. So how can we continuously perpetuate this, this narrative that the man is the superior one to the woman? I mean, it, it's, um, we keep building up this toxicity. We keep feeding it, in fact. And you know what we do when we keep feeding things, they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and you know, um, we have to be deliberate about everything we do. Um, we, we, when women explore their sexuality, when women explore their sexuality, we all know this, they are called all kinds of names, right? But when the guy does it, he's a stud, uyisoka, they are praised. Guys, honestly, we still do that even today. Ask women who go against other women who are seemingly promiscuous, but it's okay for a man to do it. And it is propped up, it is clapped for. It's like, oh yes, we've raised him well. No, no, we need to really check ourselves. Um, the, there were times and, and, and you know, there's still people who frown upon a girl child because they're wearing pants, who frown upon a woman because they're wearing pants. Let me tell you what those career coaches tell you when you go to an interview. When I was starting out in my, in my career, one of the things I used to get told by women is that do not wear pants when you go to an interview, right? I've even heard people say, chairperson of a board meeting you must not wear pants when you're going to chair board meeting i'm like why not if i like pants i'll wear pants i just love wearing dresses i love wearing skirts i love wearing whatever i want to wear okay so so it is those it is in everything that we do that it's ingrained that don't don't try to be like a man you know uh, be a girl wear those flowery dresses, uh, wear your hair long, you know, wear lipstick, put on makeup, all of these things, just so we can be objectified and, and, and be, and be, and be used as men's entertainment. That's not okay. It's not okay. And believe me, if you are finding it uh, unbearable, why would you want to continuously perpetuate that? I tell you why, because we are all the same society that we keep complaining about but we think we are helpless we think we were born this way we think that we, we 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 were we were designed to be this way no it's not um sorry i'm gonna take some some comments just now and thank you for this this uh this engagement guys uh, uh bridget says part of this patriarchy dialogue goes to how we as women help the system to thrive we have unwittingly become the gatekeeper of a system that does not serve us. And that's exactly what I'm coming to. Um, you know, but, but have you seen how the world has evolved? 
Have you seen the, the, the rise and the evolution of diversity, the evolution of the androgynous person, a person that doesn't identify as male or female? Have you seen how beautiful it is when men wear clothes that seemingly look like dresses with flowers? How gorgeous is that, bro? And, and, and this idea that people have decided that they don't identify themselves with male or female uh, 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 traits, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful that you choose who you are. You choose who you become. And, and nobody must put you in this box. So gender ambiguity has, has, has become something that is of great interest to me. And I'm so curious about the evolution of that because I've always felt, you know, and, and a lot of people know this, you know, when, when uh, girls who are seemingly like boys are called tomboys, I was called a tomboy all my life. And I think I'm still called that. I, I don't remember ever calling myself a tomboy. Um, but there's a lot of people who are pr who proudly call themselves tomboy, but there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's, it means you, you've got traits where you, you've got both female and, and male traits, uh, um, female and male traits, which means perhaps you identify with both, which means you, you carry, you know, all of those traits and it is your choice. Um, and, and. I, I've just always seen myself as a whole human being who doesn't like to be boxed. I don't like to be told what I must do and how I must come across. And and I think this is this is why I, I, I always say I couldn't even survive corporate beyond what I could because I'm so cheeky and opinionated about things. <laughs> so norms of who, who cooks and who doesn't cook have to be challenged. Guys, if we are both at work full day, why must I still be the only one that comes home and cooks? Why is that? There is nothing that revolts me more than guys who say, oh yeah, no, a relationship is not working out because she doesn't cook for me. I'm like, and what happened to your two hands? You've got two hands to do what with exactly? Sit around and scratch your God knows what. Huh? So, so we cannot perpetuate this because unfortunately all it has all that's going to happen is that our children are going to inherit it and it's never going to change and it's not okay um you know in, in my house we cook i cook my husband cooks i i cook more because i really love cooking but the days when i'm just like i'm not doing it and he does it he's cooking sunday lunch as we speak so you know if i am bringing home money big monies and you are also bringing home monies, big monies, however big monies, small, big, you name it. If we all go out to work, how is it that I'm still the one that must carry the whole load around this house? We can all nurture. Why can't we do that? Um, so, so, so be careful of these, these things that you're perpetuating in your own home. Um, things like, you know, uh, you, you still don't have children. Oh, you are still not married. I tell my children, don't have children and don't get married until you really want to and it's your choice. In fact, I prioritize the lesson of take your money and go travel the world. Don't worry about, oh, you are now almost 30 and you don't have a, a, a husband or you don't have a partner. Or No, those things must just, people must come into your life to add value to your life not to to not for you to be happy you must be happy all by yourself and understand that you don't need all of that i used to travel by myself before i even got married because i wanted to to explore the world i didn't even you know if a friend wanted to come with me it was great but i never hung my my plans on other people because i knew if i did that then my life was never going to carry on so it's very important to to just be conscious of what we are teaching our children in fact, we must teach our children to explore the world. They're not, they're not, they might be born in South Africa, but they are global citizens. They must go and seek out diversity. And if their decision is to come home and set up roots at home, then let it be. But we cannot shove like children in a box that no longer works for them. They have far more opportunities than we do. So listen, we, you, I think we all are fully have, uh, uh, aware of, of these norms and these expectations, what kind of a mom you should be, how you should laugh. You know, that thing irritates me more than people say, oh, but I mean, she's a mom now. Why does she continue like that? 
whose rules are those you know remember these rules were made by us and we must absolutely decide what we want you know also this thing about boys don't cry and you know the man being the father figure who sits in the corner and there's this scary person now listen i use that line with my kids where i'm like you want me to tell your father but the truth of the matter is that even they're like daddy <laughs> You know, but it's just nice to be able to like, you know, know that I, I have a partner in this and, and, and that I'm not doing it alone. But the truth of the matter is that we also have to be aware of what we're saying with our mouths. There are homes where actually the father is the one that says, yo, you want me to tell your mother? I've actually discovered that that's what my husband does too. He tells them, you want me to tell your mother? <laughs> but you know, the other thing is that we must show affection at home. Show affection. So it doesn't matter whether you it's a man and a, and a woman or a man and a man or a woman and a woman. Whatever your family construct is, show affection. Show love. Because how are they supposed to know what love is if they're not even introduced to it at home? So in my household, my husband picks me up. I jump on him. I kiss him. We, we do whatever we feel is appropriate for the children to, to learn. They must understand that this tox toxic masculinity around men are, are these monsters doesn't exist. You know, they, they also love. They must show love. They must be loved and it must be shown. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I just, things like when someone is speaking and they speak over them, you know, my kids know very well, nobody must interrupt them when they're speaking. If it's their turn to speak, they will, and you interrupt them, they will tell you very well, they're like, I am still speaking. And that is something that I have ensured. They absolutely appreciate and never let anybody ride on them like that. Because this is what happens to women in boardrooms. You don't speak up and somebody speaks over you and you sit there quietly because eh, you are scared, you know, imposter syndrome, you guys, you know this. And I'm like, absolutely not. Nobody's going to disrespect you. Nobody's going to disrespect your time, your opinion. Even if you are not making sense, it is yours not to make sense. And guess what? Who says, who, who's, who's the judge of sense anyway? You speak your mind, say what you believe. And if you change your mind along the way, that's perfectly okay. And this is, these are the things, you know, we, we really have, have to do. I love to dance. I'm 42 years old. I have danced since I was forever. I used to go to clubs to dance when I was at varsity. And I hated it when guys started hating on us. I would even go to a club by myself just to go and dance. I still do it today. I mean, like dance. I don't go to clubs now. Gosh, no. <laughs> I can't. I'm too old. <laughs> but also, I'm already sleepy at 9 p.m. And clubs only start happening at 11 o'clock or midnight, I think. See, I don't know. Um, but I, I have my home. I've got my music. I love to dance. That's how I stay fit. That's how I feed my soul. I am always dancing. And some people will be like, ah, somebody's mother. What? Mothers are not allowed to have fun. Mothers are not, mothers are what? Not human beings. So it's very important that you, we absolutely do this, you know, um, to remind our children that they are worthy. I, and I, I can go on forever about this, but, uh, but I think guys, the, the, ultimately, the, the fact of the matter is that we are um, the society. That we are complaining about so if there's something we don't like in our society we must change it remember cultures evolve societies evolve and don't ever hang on this thing that elders you know who did it then we must also do it now things have changed times have changed some principles yes you can still adopt but adopt them to suit to suit the environment that you are in and um, we take part in making these rules we enforce them. In fact, women are the biggest supporters of patriarchy because they are the ones that perpetuate it. They're the ones that continuously tell their boy children this and their girl children that. They're the ones that constantly tell other women how they should be behaving or how they should be dressing up or how they should even be speaking or how they should sit or, you know it's it, 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 it's 
a system that is designed to subordinate us, but it has also in the same process led us to see to devalue ourselves. How can you love your girl children and prop her up if you don't even love yourself? If you don't even see your own value? So I always say that everything starts with us at the end of the day. We must understand who we are. We must understand what we bring to the table. Then we'll be able to give something to other people. But if you yourself are still oppressed and your mind is still colonized by that patriarchal system and what a woman should and shouldn't do, then you are not ever going to dismantle this patriarchy. So again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people marching and, and doing all sorts of wonderful feminist rallies. But guys, ultimately, it's your actions that matter. It's what you do every single day that matters. And this whole conversation around, you know, girl on girl hate or, or you know, trying to build more sisterhood, it, it, it really is, 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 is trying to say, women, we can't still, we can't continuously be, be at each other's throats and be the ones that are constantly putting each other down. But the truth of the matter is that you can have all those wonderful campaigns, which are absolutely impactful. But if people do not decide to change and act upon that, patriarchy is going to persist and it's going to exist. And people like us are going to be seen as these mavericks who are, who are uncontrollable. Because that's the whole point of patriarchy is to control you, control women and, and, and control women for men's entertainment and men's satisfaction, objectify you. Is that really how you want your children to, to grow? Is that the world that you want your children to grow under, the society that you would like them to grow under? So I think we must change the narrative, but we must change it by living accordingly, not just speaking, not just saying it. We must display it by how we do it. If you are having an argument in your home with your partner, and let's assume you, you, you are, there's a man and a woman in that partnership, and the man starts raising their voice at you, you must be very clear that nobody speaks to you like that. We're all adults, right? So you speak, I speak. Doesn't mean you don't, you can get angry, you can get irritated like I can too, but don't you dare disrespect me. So these are the things that our children watch in the home. You shove me and then I let it be and I go in a corner and I cry. What am I teaching my children? That it's okay? That's not, that's not right. We should really, really be deliberate about what we're doing. And, and, and I, I think, you know, ultimately, what would we want our obituaries to read at the end of the day? Is it going to be that we, we were people pleasers, that we fitted in a box, that we, 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 we were the police of other women, that we were there telling you, ooh, what, you, you, you had a long day at work, and you didn't get home to cook for your husband. Oh, when you're done cooking, you didn't give him some, some, some. It's like, what kind of a woman are you? What kind of a wife are you? Is that how we want to be remembered? I doubt it. I doubt that we want to be remembered as the police judges and executors of other women. Your job is to support another woman. Your job is to first of all and foremost, get to know who you are, get to know yourself, get to know what you bring to the table. Because when you value yourself, I can assure you, you've got no business devaluing other women because you fully appreciate what they go through every single day. So let's kill the judgment. Let's kill, you know, being the police uh, 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 of, of, of other women. Now, every step we take today, I think should really be leading to how we want to be remembered to what we really would like our obituaries to read at the, end of, at the end of the day, the footprints that we want our children to walk in. And, and how, do you, how, do you, how do you deal with this every single day? So I think that above everything I've said, we must enforce accountability and consequences. The problem with having these, these uncontrollable gender-based violence statistics that are disheartening and just gut-wrenching is because there are no consequences. Oh, what? I mean, you just beat up, you beat up your wife. No, I mean, couples, they go through these things. You know these narratives. You know them very well. You even have women who feel like if their partners are not beating them up, then they don't love them. We need to change this narrative. 
there has got to be consequences for every single bit of action every single bit of action toxic masculinity cannot keep going unpunished challenge the traditional roles and structures challenge them why why not you know if, if, if you finding something no longer works for you, and we should be conscious about these things, we should be a little more deliberate. We, we've got a whole lot more resources at our disposal. Our gut, I think, has absolutely evolved to, to, to really speak the truth. So why can't we listen to that? Why must we keep silencing it? We must teach our boy children that no means no. When my son plays with his sisters here, yeah, and the sisters are older than him, when they when he plays with them, and the moment they say no, let's stop, and he continues, I go after him, not like that, but I go and I educate him, and I say, remember, we under your sister said no, and yeah, but we were playing. No, she said no. The moment she said stop, you must stop. Even if you're playing, even if she then comes and wants to play again, that is okay. It's her choice. When she says stop, you respect that, you stop. Now, you might think, oh, wow, you know, that, that's so, they're just playing. No, that is how we breed these, these monsters that are walking the streets. This is how we perpetuate patriarchy. By saying, no, 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 this circumstance, under these conditions, she was saying no, but actually she really wanted to say yes. No, no is no. There's no, there's no other. So you must respect the boundaries. You must respect women. You must treat them with dignity. But you know what? Girl children, please understand. You are not subservient to anybody. You are nobody's sub subordinate. You will not be disrespected. So you must stand up and fight for yourself. Because when you are fighting, you're also fighting for those who are coming behind you. So we must teach our girl children to be assertive, to stand up and be counted. Their voice matters. And we do that by allowing them to be in our homes so that when they go out into the world, they can absolutely thrive and know that they are worthy and they deserve to be heard. Let us unapologetically live according to our own rules. Us as mothers, especially as women, we must absolutely live our lives unapologetically because if we are apologizing for everything, for that little time you went and you decided to go sit at a, at a restaurant and have a glass of wine by yourself because you really needed some quiet time, why are you feeling guilty about it? Do you know how much you give? But it's the other women who then say, oh, wow, I can't believe you do that. You actually go overseas without your family? You know, in that judgment tone, stay in your lane. I'll stay in mine. I do what's right for me so that I can give more to the people around me in my ecosystem. So st women, we must stop apologizing so much. We must stop explaining ourselves so much. We're constantly explaining and constantly apologizing. Constant. I'm like, why are you apologizing so much? What, are, what have you done that's wrong? But we've been conditioned to be so apologetic of ourselves or our lives. Just the fact that we breathe, just the fact that you are born a girl, you must apologize for it. We need to dismantle that because it does not serve us. It does not serve our children well. And the future will not be kind to them if we keep keep uh, uh, carrying on like that. So our children more learn more from what we do than what we say. And it is important that we challenge these norms and challenge them and ensure that your home is a safe space to challenge these norms. Because if you don't challenge them at home, your kids are gonna find it very difficult to challenge out there in the boardroom. And in the boardroom, they're taught, uh, speak up. Uh, I mean, they, 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 they're told, oh, you're not going to get a really big bonus because you don't really speak up. We don't, we don't get your, your, your input. But all the while, we forget that we oppress them in the home and they, they can't thrive anywhere else because they're so scared. So I'm going to take some of your comments and questions now because I, I absolutely can talk about this all day long <laughs> and i'm very passionate about it live your life according to your own rules remember these are rules that were made by us us the society they are rules that we continue to 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 prop up uh, we continue to perpetuate their uh, practices, their beliefs, their cultural norms that must evolve with time because we have evolved as human beings um 
absolutely i was told to not go to paris alone because where's your husband going to take you i don't even have a boyfriend i went to paris alone and had the best time i like it oh absolutely you must do it never mind all these these naysayers guys at the end of the day we are here we are born to live our lives the best we can change lives in the process and then we'll be dead someday what do you want to say you did with your life please others try and you 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 what, what do you want to say that you you lived a life where you never felt like you were yourself where you never absolutely ever felt like you could just thrive this is the reason why many mothers uh, are so depressed many many women are depressed because of this 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 undue pressure to be perfect perfect for who for the men that that's just how it is that is not okay you know um where does tradition fit in in all this how do we ensure we don't lose our tradition as as we fight patriarchy i, I think just listen to this again because tradition is part of a culture it, it, it's practices it's beliefs those evolve over time and unfortunately they are also used to perpetuate patriarchy and and it is it is incumbent upon ourselves to choose the things that work for us and keep those and maintain those and and no one is going to tell you what works for you what doesn't work for you but you need to be deliberate and understand and consciously understand how those traditions could be perpetuating patriarchy and could be perpetuating toxic masculinity could be perpetuating a situation where we've got women being killed by men so you need to understand how does everything you do every single day perpetuate that narrative or change the narrative it's completely up to you to do that but remember that these are the same institutions that have been used to to oppress women uh, rules must always take the legacy into consideration i don't agree with women in the name of freedom of behavior who act anyhow even in front of their children um sorry i don't understand that that point um it's funny how patriarchy has read and read an ugly head during the lockdown a lot of my friends complaining their partners just lazy around all day eating drinking and one sex you know one of the things i did say when when the lockdown started i did a live session where i said i was really worried about the people who are going to be stuck in homes where there is no escape and okay, I mean, the, 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 one of the things that have happened naturally with this lockdown is that people are stuck with their abusers um, and they have nowhere to go. They have had nowhere to go. Um, and it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we have such a high rate of gender based violence in our country and the consequences are very minimal. That is the serious problem. And again, these are the same systems that are designed to support and defend patriarchy same families remember if a family won't even you know ensure their consequences when 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 there's there's these uh, cases in the homes do you really think the justice system is going to fall in line so we've got a lot of work to do and i know it is dire okay so i'm not even going to mince my words about that it is bad you we it, it's one of those situations where you can't say oh yeah no no only 20 women died this year in the hands of their partners no you just one is one too much so we have to do everything we can we have to do everything we can and we must raise our children better the judgment for going out alone for quite for quiet time how dare you yeah absolutely i'm really i'm very clear though i mean People must live their lives the way they want to live their lives. I'll live mine the way I want to. <laughs> and I don't need to, I don't owe anyone any explanation. Believe me, I don't explain myself very well. Um, we as women need to learn um, to be unapologetic in how we live. We buckle under too much societal pressure. Pressure, it's a lot. Listen, I, I chat, thanks, Mpo. I chat to so many women every day who are incredibly overwhelmed unfortunately i also have to tell them that listen i'm actually really not a psychologist but i'd love to help people you know understand their their construct and how they can deal with it but there's a lot out there there's a lot of pain there's a lot of depression there's a lot of pressure but we put this pressure on ourselves you know um whose rules are these anyway if we created these rules as a system as a society 
We need to understand that we can change them ourselves. And if you don't change them for the collective, that's fine. Change them for yourself because ultimately you live and die as yourself. You don't live and die as a collective. And if the collective does not help you or sustain uh, your own uh, purpose and values in life, then you need to think about the collective. Think about the collective differently. Um, okay, let's see what else we can take. Um, it's actually women who oppress other women and create these expectations. Um, yeah, they play a, that plays a significant role. But also the men play a, a very big role too. So uh, I think it's everybody's problem really. Culture and religion are the most powerful weapons used to justify and perpetuate patriarchy. We are always referred back to the Bible Nesiko, and as a fundamental basis for rules that betray our souls. And that's why, listen, if I start going down the religion route, ooh, even these cultures and norms, everything is just, we need to revisit guys we really do um and i mean i i i'm a magot so i also take part in certain you know traditions um in 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 my own uh, 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 family and and there are things that you're like kind of how did this one come about you know and what is what purpose is it still serving um and and you know, I, I'm fortunate enough that I've got a mom-in-law who's 81 but highly enlightened and I can talk to her about some of these things and challenge some of the things that we do, you know. Um, the system fails us when the abusers aren't adequately punished and that's the single biggest problem we have in South Africa is first of all, the perpetrators are, are protected in the families. So again, perpetuating patriarchy and saying girl children are, 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 and women uh, uh, have no value, carry no value, um, are not worth much, and they must know that they are just objects. Um, and also then the, the justice system itself then also fails. Um, so, so, you know, it's a double-edged sword, but we have to fight in some way, um, in, in every way. In fact, we must fight where we are. And change it um the judgment never ends amanda when you're vocal you're perceived as arrogant when you prioritize self you're selfish i just do me and silence the buzzing noise there we go there are societal and traditional norms which we have learned we still have a long way to go to unlearn this for as long as there's no literature to support this but we must do it ourselves uh, we must create the literature ourselves um okay let's see can i recommend books that speak about patriarchy some literature that can help educate us i think listen i studied social sciences so anything in that line um sociology specifically i mean you you can read about um patrick or forget that you can just go on the internet and and start uh, researching what you would like to know of there are many there's much much literature and resources on that um i also feel like an hour isn't enough yes <laughs> um so so i will i will because we are gonna end uh, soon i'll open another session and then i can just see if i can uh, uh, answer some of the questions um sorry there, there's some that i missed whilst i was busy talking but um uh did you get married into a family that shares the same views on equality between you and your husband? If not, how did you challenge this narrative? I did. In fact, this is why I'm saying to you, my husband is busy cooking Sunday lunch. Uh, well, he cooked Sunday lunch. He also made breakfast. My husband looked after the children when I'd go away, uh, even if it's just a personal trip, when I'm on business away, as much as I do when he's away. So he does exactly the same thing. Uh, and and my mom-in-law is a very strong woman who raised his children to be independent and it, you know so so i'm fortunate that I, I i i chose a partner it wasn't by chance believe me i chose him <laughs> i chose a partner that you know held the same values as, as i do and he he does exactly the same with the children you know the the, the girls ride bicycles, like all of them. So we challenge the norms in this house constantly. Uh, girls play soccer. We go watch them play soccer. Uyanda does whatever he wants to. Uyanda takes nail polish and wants to put it on his fingers. And I say, for sure, go for it, boy, boy. Why not? 
what does nail polish mean for him you know so if he wants to to explore it why not sometimes he wears his sister's dresses you know we, we we all grew up at a time when oh my gosh a boy mustn't wear dresses he's gonna be gay as if you just turn gay by by wearing a, a, a girl's dress you know these are norms that are really not good guys they're not they don't serve us. They don't serve our children very well because all we do is just keep eroding their self-esteem. So in my home, there is constant challenging of norms and we are united. We're a united front against that. And sometimes the norms are within us because remember, we are part of the society. We have grown up in this society. So we don't say that we are perfect in any shape or form, but we recognize when something needs to be challenged and we've got a safe space to do it. And whether the space was safe or not, to be honest, guys, I, I think I'm just, there's just some things that I'll never be able to tolerate. And being boxed is one of them. And when, you, when you're when newly, you newly, newly words, you know, you're all trying to find a space. You are trying to understand what does it mean now that you are married. And I think it's, it's even more challenging when you've always been independent and then suddenly you're not, okay, so what does it mean now? You know, but, but. As long as you share a similar set of values, I think that you stand a really good chance of, of making it work. But allow the space to challenge things that don't work and allow the space to admit that, you know, actually, I wasn't even I didn't think about it that way. You're so right. I, I'm constantly asking things like, you know, this thing that, you know, when you're eating and they say hey, when you're when you're growing up, sit still and eat and don't speak, don't don't. I'm like. Okay, but eating is actually quite a social thing. It's like it's, you can have great conversations over a meal around the table as a family. But children are always told, or maybe we're all told that you must keep quiet when you're eating. Maybe they didn't want you to choke. I hope so. But we all know that children were just told sit there quietly and don't engage. We, we really do engage. Um, God go to the religion route i think we are reading the bible wrong no the bible ultimately is 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 read by by multiple different people and they have their own interpretation of what is in the bible now we can even talk about how the bible came to be that's another story altogether that's how let's say i avoid religion but i'm very spiritual guys so <laughs> um yes i will i will post this on 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 the igtv um I'm going to I'm going to 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 open another session, guys, so that we can just have a little more engagement um, and, and and I can answer more of your questions because there's quite a lot of them and we we definitely are gonna be out of time shortly. Um, can we talk about religion and tradition in part two? <laughs> when our families ask for payment from a husband when the wife runs away because of his violence, oh. Listen, families are breeding grounds for, for all this, these social ills. And I'm a big critic of families. Um, and, and purely because I think we really need to do better. We can, we, families are such a powerful, it's such a powerful institution, such a powerful social system, a major social system. And, and we can really do better. We can, we can learn from things that didn't work before. We can take what has worked and, 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 you know, carry that with us. But it is completely our choice to choose new rules, to choose new things, new ways uh, uh, to empower our children. So, so I really don't think that we are stuck in, a, in, in the past and stuck in a time when, you know, we, we can't change anything. Significant strides have been made. Things have evolved significantly. So we must also evolve with the times. And that's very important. So let me, um, I'm not sure what time, yeah, no, I'm out of time now, but uh, let, me, let me save this one. I'm going to open another one. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll continue chatting in the other session, okay?